Leading trainer at Parks Racing is Jamie Ness. We asked him how it all started. South Dakota, maybe this tall, my grandfather bought into, uh, with his friend, bought into a, probably the slowest horse to ever race at the bush tracks in South Dakota. So he would haul all us grandkids out to the races every weekend, watch his horse run. You know, there you run every week. And they would trail the field, run last, but he didn't care. And uh, I mean, sometimes you just get a calling for something. And I loved it. So my dad kind of started training a little bit after that and through high school, you know, on the, on the smaller circuit. And, and I would go in the summertime and go back to school. And so the itch was always there, I, I loved it. So then I went to college, tried to get out of it, and then the, the worst thing that happened is I got a, a job in Minnesota, right out of college, working for Caterpillar, but I had to drive by the track every day, back and forth to work. And I just, like, I worked six months, and I'm like, I, I, I want to do this, be a horse trainer, so. In Jamie Ness's younger years, his passion was always to be at the track. Absolutely, you know, I used to go to the track, even when I didn't work there, and uh, that's where I wanted to be, you know. And then uh, I was young, and, I, and there was other younger guys in Minnesota, other younger people that were the same way, so we, we had kind of a little uh, group, and we, I mean, and we got together, and, and uh, it was just the place to be. Right? Jimmy Ness talked about training in the Midwest, and a slight difference from training here on the East Coast. Uh, a little, Midwestern's a little bit more, um, more family orientated because I think the fact that we don't stay in one place at one time. So the end of Canterbury, we all get up and move to Prairie Meadows or we move to Hawthorne or we go this. So we kind of move together around. It's a little bit different, it's not one place. And uh, you're used to living a very gypsy life, you know, real, real gypsy. You gotta find somebody to live next, next, next town over, next town over, next town over. And we, we do that, I and mean, they still do that out there. You know, there's not one long meet. Jamie Ness spoke about one of his first owners in his training career. I mean, ironically, the first real owner that I had, like owner owner was in Canterbury, was the track announcer, Paul Allen. I don't know if you know Paul or not. I mean, he, he got a bunch of his people together and I knew him because I were, I punched tickets for the mutuals and train at the same time to try to pay my train, to support my training habit. So I knew Paul and he got, I think we claimed a filly for 10,000. Her name was um, Cryptic Rumors and she won first time. And, uh, and his name was Slow Pay Stable, of course. You know, I had no money and I'm training for Slow Pay Stable, so. Ness and his owners are atop the standings. Jamie Ness takes pride in winning for his connections, who he also calls friends. I have a lot of partners and I'm, I'm usually, most of the horse, a lot of the horses, I'm involved a little bit in them. And I, I like, uh, it's, it's funner to win a race and then call a couple of guys and friends actually and say, you know, it's, it's funner that way. It's not just me, you know. Are there any races out there that leading trainer Jamie Ness and his team still want to win? Everybody wants good, good horses. You know, obviously I want to run the Derby and I haven't really been close, um, but that's always a long-term goal. But, you know, I, I, I'm getting a little tired. I got two young girls, seven and eight. I want to watch them go to horse shows and whatever they got to do, you know, whatever, whatever activities they're involved in. So I can see a little slowdown coming soon.